Greetings, folks. Lance here. Well, what we're looking at here is my decommissioned flooded lead acid battery. It's 48 volts, 750 amp hours, includes a watering system, which, man, I tell you, is a serious time saver. Uh, highly recommended for any flooded lead acid battery system. Uh, but I don't have to worry about that anymore, which I'll get to here in a bit. But nowadays, there's, there's probably not many situations where you're going to want something like this. You know, having to maintain with the water, uh, not very mobile. This thing's one and a half tons. I had to borrow a pallet jack to get it out of the solar shed. And then uh, I'm giving this to my good neighbor, Kevin. It still has life in it. Even after nine years, it's warrantied for seven. He came over with his tractor and a boom. And it's just too heavy. So we're going to come up with another solution. But... This will be great to get him started with a solar system on, on his place. But we'll just have to figure out a way to get it moved over. I mean, that's one of the big drawbacks to these really big industrial batteries. Uh, they're just, they're not very mobile. But uh, this has been a real workhorse for me. I mean, I really can't complain. But with the new lithium iron phosphate batteries, I mean, I don't have to worry about... Um, having to water them they're light enough that these these racks are on casters i can move these racks these are the original life power fours and this is the eg4 ll version two so i can move these around in fact i'm going to have to move them around because i have a spot up here where i'm putting in a couple of eg4 inverters uh, basically to have a fully redundant system. Not that I'm going to run them together, but this is my original Outback Power that I've had for about nine years, maybe going on close to 10 now. But the big challenge is I'm going to have to figure out how to, how to do all this. I may have to restring, but my current strings... These charge controllers will only support 150 volts, but 80 amps. The new inverters with the built-in charge controllers, I think they support up to 500 volts, but low amperage. So it may be difficult. I'm, I'm still trying to figure this out. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. But we'll cross that bridge one step at a time. But I will be uh, doing additional videos on the EG4 inverters up here. So stay tuned.